Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming. Today we're looking at Gladius, Relics of War, developed by Proxy Studios and published by Slytherine in 2018. Gladius Relics of War is a 4x turn-based strategy game based in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. It features four unique playable factions, city building, resource management, researchable and tiered technology trees, single and multiplayer play across randomly generated terrains filled with brutal, unrelenting combat, very reminiscent of the tabletop game. If four factions aren't enough for you, there are five more factions and a handful of smaller DLC packages available for download. System requirements are light. You'll need Windows 7 64-bit or newer, a dual-core CPU, and 4 gig of RAM. Any PC built in the last six or seven years should have no trouble. Check the video description for more detail. The campaign allows you to play with up to eight factions in total and divide them however you like into any combination of teams. You'll play versus the AI in single player or up to eight players online or locally in hot seed mode. Each campaign scenario is completely customizable. Basic settings allow for adjusting difficulty, world size, land mass, and game pacing, while advanced settings expand into an abundance of options. Each game has a randomly generated landscape based on your options, so you'll really never play the same game twice. The campaign itself is broken up into six chapters, each consisting of various tasks and goals such as researching tech, building and construction, and defeating enemy encampments. What you get here isn't a traditional campaign, but a game centered around skirmish type gameplay with some added storyline bits and objectives to keep you pressing forward. Being a 4x game, city building and resource management play some of the largest roles in Gladius. You'll build a variety of facilities that range from armories, chapels, libraries, and dormitories, while managing resources such as requisition, energy, research, and loyalty. Each building requires certain resources to build and maintain while also providing some ability or resource in return. As your requirements grow, you'll need to expand your city walls by acquiring nearby land and clearing it of any dangerous obstacles while also ensuring defenses are in place. Unit variety is plentiful and varying in roles from offensive and defensive healing and repairing to those who live solely to strike fear into the minds of the enemy. For the Space Marines, units range from your basic Space, Assault and Devastator Marines to Librarians, Captains and Apothecaries. You also find Land Speeders, Predator Tanks and Dreadnoughts with which to wage war. Units have a variety of attributes that affect how and when they are utilized. A few of those include Armor, Hit Points, Morale and Experience. And experience here is meaningful, adding 10% strength in both defensive and offensive attributes per level. Units that are made up of individual squad members have their damage output drop as squad members are lost in combat. The research tree consists of 10 tiers of technologies that unlock various units, buildings, weapons and bonuses that expand your options to better build and dominate the battlefield. With each tier and completed research project comes a cost increase but with a larger payoff upon completion as tier levels rise, so pick your projects wisely. The game also requires you to complete at least two research projects in any given tier before progressing to the next. Combat can be very daunting at times as you need to weigh risk versus reward and strategize thoughtfully for the best outcomes. Choosing the right unit for an assault that will overcome a target's armor rating, ensuring that you have sufficient hit points to withstand a counter-offensive, anticipating enemies lying in wait out of view, and ensuring you have a place to fall back upon are just some of the many considerations you'll make during the course of battle. Heroes such as captains, librarians, and chaplains are powerful, battle-hardened units with unique special abilities and attacks. They can also use relics to further increase their battle prowess and can learn further abilities as they gain experience. These units can truly help to turn the tide of the battle and are not to be taken lightly. Graphics are not necessarily where this game shines brightest, however, for what the game lacks in detail it makes up for with its clean, crisp models and nicely animated weather effects. The layout and presentation are also well put together and make the units feel like they're part of a tabletop experience with units standing tall versus the terrain they occupy. Animations are also pretty good and albeit simple they convey the actions of the units nicely. Cutscenes are also non-existent outside of a few lightly animated images but when it comes down to it, we're here for a more authentic Warhammer 40,000 strategy gaming experience, so I'm okay with a slightly subdued graphical palette. Sound effects are kept to a minimal and can be a little repetitive, but are still well done and don't make the game feel too hectic. Additionally, atmospheric sound is good, with the rain falling and the birds chirping among them. Music is excellent and composed by experienced composer Dan Buick. It helps to really set the ambience and pacing for gameplay and does so quite well. 
The few bits of voice acting found during the game's introductory are pretty good and have the typical mechanized intonations and deep grumble found in most 40k games. War was on all sides. Taken out of context, the story here isn't particularly deep, but when taking the 40k universe into account, the story offers plenty. The gist of the story is that Gladius Prime was known to Imperial scholars as a planet of archaeological interest, and during colonization, ancient relics were uncovered with a dark past, and now the planet knows nothing but the horrors of war. As you play through the game, you'll learn bits and pieces of story lore, but there's nothing profound and thought-provoking. The controls are simple as you can play the game entirely with the mouse and arrow keys, but if you want to be more proficient, there's a whole host of keyboard shortcuts available. The interface is well laid out, simple and very accessible, except for trying to find units while in your defensive fortresses or cities as they felt overly camouflaged. The game took a bit of time to get used to playing, but after a few hours I became proficient enough to play comfortably, but there are some mechanics to learn and understand. Thankfully, to ease growing pains, the game offers a full step-by-step -step introductory scenario and a complete game manual to help new players become more situated. In my first game, I lost badly in the end after several hundred turns and over 10 hours of gameplay, and that was just a single playthrough. The game offers nearly unlimited replayability given its randomly generated maps and hugely customizable game options. Even if the storylines and objectives themselves are limited to one per race, to further add to this, there's a whole host of available DLC, adding more races and units, as well as full Steam Workshop mod integration. You can truly make this game your own. For what feels like a more authentic Warhammer 40k experience than many other games will look no further. Even if you're not into Warhammer itself, fans of strategy or 4x games will surely find hours and hours of challenging gameplay here in Gladius Relics of War. This is a low frills experience focusing on the game and only the game, and I think that's what I liked most about it.